Welcome to our lecture online. The third aspect that the Schrodinger equation needs to adhere to is that it needs to be a proper wave equation. So here's the generalized wave equation in one dimension. Any equation that claims to be a real wave equation needs to satisfy this general equation. So when we go to the solution of the wave function that we're looking for in the Schrodinger equation, we know that it must be in the form of y equals the function of time plus or minus x over v. x being, of course, the one-dimensional distance, and of course, this could be in x, y, and z dimensions as well. But in the one-dimensional case, this should be the generalized form of the wave equation. And as such, it must satisfy this equation right here. So for an undamped system, the general equation or the general solution to the wave equation must be of this form. Of course, this has an imaginary part and a real part, so when we write this in the form of sines and cosines, knowing that this is equal to that, this would be the generalized form of the wave equation we're looking for to build up the Schrodinger equation. It must start in this format. And, at the same time, it must satisfy this equation right here. To get a feel of how that works, let's compare that to a general wave equation that we're familiar with. Let's say we use the equation where y is equal to some amplitude times the cosine of omega, or let's say, let's write it as kx minus omega t. This is the general wave equation in classical mechanics. If we now take the partial derivative of this equation with respect to x, and then we take the second partial derivative, with respect to x, and we do the same with respect to time, it should satisfy this equation. So let me show you how that works, and then later on in the later video, we'll show you that once we come up with a proper wave equation for the Schrodinger equation, we will also satisfy this equation in the same way. So, so let's do something we're familiar with. First of all, let's take the partial derivative with respect to y. So the partial of y with respect to x, I should say. There we go. So that's equal to, the derivative of cosine is a negative sine, that's minus a times the sine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of this with respect to x, which is k. If we now take the second derivative of that with respect to x, we get the derivative of sine is the cosine, so we get minus a, and it would be k times k, or k squared, because we'll do it again, times the cosine of kx minus omega t, times the derivative of this, which is k, so k times k gives you k squared. We'll do the same for the derivative with respect to t. The partial of the function with respect to t is equal to minus Let's see, here. This, this respect to t is, yes, minus a times the sine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of this, which is a minus omega. This minus cancels out this minus, so we have a omega sine of, of kx minus omega t. And then the partial, the second partial of y with respect to t is going to be equal to minus a, we'll make that plus a times omega, times the cosine, because the derivative of sine is the cosine, kx minus omega t times the minus omega again. Of course, that makes this equal to a minus a omega squared cosine of kx minus omega t. Now, if we plug it into this equation right here, let's see what we get. Now, I'm a little bit out of room here, so I'm going to put a line right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug these results into this equation and see what we get. First of all, on the left side, we get this. We get minus a k squared times the cosine of, um, let's see, kx minus omega t. That should equal 1 over the velocity squared times minus a times omega squared times the cosine of kx minus omega t like so. The question is, is that indeed correct? If we have a proper wave equation, it will satisfy the general form of the wave equation. Well, we have the cosine of kx omega t on both sides, so that cancels out. And we have a on both sides and a minus on both sides. If we then simplify the equation, we now get that k squared is equal to 1 over v squared times omega squared. And of course, that's what we're trying to find out. Is that indeed equal? 
Well, if we come over here and realizing that k is equal to, well, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to write like this. I'm going to write as k squared over omega squared is equal to 1 over v squared. All right. And of course, since everything is squared, I can take the square root of both sides. So the question is, is k over omega equal to 1 over v? Now, k by definition is 2 pi over lambda. So we can write over here, we can say that's 2 pi over lambda. And omega is 2 pi f, 2 pi times the frequency. And the question is, is that 1 over the velocity? Now, notice that 2 pi and 2 pi cancels. So on the left side, we end up with 1 over lambda times the frequency. On the right side, it's 1 over v. And of course, for any wave, the wavelength times the frequency is indeed equal to the velocity, which means that is equal. And therefore, this has been shown to be a proper wave equation because it satisfied the general form of the wave equation. In the very same way, Schrodinger equation in this general form, and of course that's not the final form of the Schrodinger equation, we'll have to change it some more, but once we have the final form starting with this generalized solution of the wave equation, this should be able to be, this should be able to satisfy this wave equation to show that indeed it's a valid wave equation. And then from that we're going to derive the Schrodinger equation which will then be used to describe motion of small particles in the quantum mechanic world. And that's the process through which they went to come up with that equation. They couldn't really derive one from scratch, from basic properties in physics. They just had to kind of finagle it and compare it to things that they knew to come up with the equation that hopefully would work in describing the motion of small particles. And that's the journey they took. Onward to the next video to see what they did next.